Zegris question. Zegris resigns. After weeks of drama, Zegris has finally resigned. What do you think of his deal? Three years, 5.75. Seems cheap for a guy of his popularity in talent. Will there be a rift for his next deal negotiations? So yeah, Trevor Zegris, the reports came out like a week ago that he was only getting offered three to $4 million. I'm not sure like how realistic that was, but clearly, according to Elliot Friedman, there was a meeting between Pat Brisson in the Ottawa set at the Ottawa center is Pat Brisson in the Anaheim Ducks GM, uh, Pat Verbeek. And apparently they, they came together and decided on a number that was fair. 5.75. I assume that it was something like maybe the ducks were offering low $4 million. Zegris wanted high sixes. So they were like split the difference 5.75, but overall for this deal, I think it actually is a pretty great deal for the Anaheim Ducks. You look at them compared to, oh wait, you look at them compared to other players in his draft class. This comes for us from Marcuse. This was back when it was alleged that he was only getting offered three to $4 million, but other guys from his draft class, Hughes got eight mil cousins, got 7.1 Boldy got seven Caulfield got 7.85. And obviously those deals were all long-term deals. So you look at it over the next three years, Zegris only getting $5.75 million. I think that's very good value. I think that's fantastic value for the Anaheim Ducks. My only problem is, and I went in depth on this on my TikTok, is what are the Ducks going to do over the next three years? They're not that competitive of a team. So yes, you're bridging him. And that bridge is fantastic value for a guy that gets you 60 points pretty consistently mid-60s. He's a very good offensive player, very good play driver. But that defense is a pretty pretty big wart in his game, but 5.75 for a mid 60 point guy. That is good value. But over the next three years, are the Anaheim Ducks going to be using that money to go out and actually contend, have Zegers on that low cap hit and utilize that surplus value in order to win? I don't really think that's the case. That's why I kept on saying, I think they should have got something done long-term, even if it was going back to that comparison, even if it was Let's say he gave a guy a Jack Hughes eight by eight. People would think it's ridiculous because Jack Hughes only gets paid eight million. Are you telling me that Trevor Zegris will not at least be worth eight million dollars in four years when he's still probably putting up around 70 points and the cap has ri- risen 10, 15 million dollars? I would have just swallowed it now because now it screams that the Anaheim Ducks in three years, once Carlson's a stud, once uh, Zellwerg is a stud and they have to pay all those guys. And you also have to worry about Trevor Zegris now, who's probably going to be mid seventies, maybe even 80 point guy and still have that popularity. Going back to the, the question, the popularity, they were able to wrangle him in be like, Oh, you have all this hype, but you haven't really proved it yet. If he has the track record in three years, as well as that popularity and marketability, you're going to have to give him like 8.59 million dollars, maybe even more again, with that cap rising. So overall, there is some big risk involved in it. I compare it to the Rasmus Dahlin contract in the sense that Rasmus Dahlin got paid the three-year bridge deal. I think it was $6.25 million. Buffalo didn't make the playoffs two of those years. We're going to see what happens this year. But now they got great value on that bridge deal, but not really a lot of team success. So now you're going to have to buckle in and pay them $10.5 million. I am just such a fan of giving these young studs that are proven to a degree. Zegris, I think we can agree at worst is going to be an elite second line center that can get you 60 plus points. Is that worth 7.5 to $8 million on a long-term deal? Yes. And his ceiling, once the Ducks actually have some talent, could legitimately be point per game. I never, I don't think he's ever going to be a top five center, maybe even not. He could be top 10, fringe top 10, but maybe he doesn't have that high, high ceiling, but I think you still should have locked him up. But that's just my thoughts. And when looking at the duck salary cap situation, it's not like they have any money tied long-term. The only guy that they have signed long-term right now is obviously Troy Terry, who signed for the next seven years. So it's not like they had this cap crunch. I think you just should have given out that money similar to a team that we're going to talk about later. The Ottawa Senators just handed out long-term deals, and thus far, it has worked out fantastic. They gave Brady Kachuk. He didn't even have the resume that Trevor Zegers has. He got a seven-year, $7.8 million deal. He got absolutely clowned for that. Looks like a fantastic deal now. Tim Stutzla, before he broke out, they paid him. Looks like a fantastic deal. Ottawa was in that situation where they had the salary cap space, so they decided to take a shot on their young guys. Anaheim seems to not be going down that path. Maybe Zegers is just Fugazi, and maybe they won't. He won't break out and become a point per game stud, but it is very risky. And, and if he doesn't break out, then the Ducks rebuild is kind of 
not in jeopardy, but that's definitely not a good sign for the Anaheim Ducks. 